All right, so today we're going to look at inclined planes. Um, the first problem that we see there is we have a 50 kilogram block that's sliding down an incline. It has an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. So it's, the picture is drawn for you, but it's not really to scale. That's all right. There's 30.0 degrees, and then we have our block, and it's sliding down. So we put little swishies behind it to show that it's moving. Because that block could be at rest. Now if you think about an incline and we set an object on an incline, for example, here's, here's an incline and I put this on there. Currently it's in an incline, but it's at rest. What's holding it in place? Static friction is there, that's right. Um, that is uh, Matthew Weed for reference. Um, <laughs> just so he gets that credit on the video. And um, eventually we can raise it so that it actually will slide with a constant velocity down the incline. And that's what's going on in this case is that we are moving with a constant velocity, which tells us a few things about the, the block uh, and the forces that are on it. So let's kind of draw a picture of all the forces that are acting on this block. What's the first one that's, that's acting on it? Good, which we call? We call weight, okay? And what direction is the weight? Straight down. So I'm going to draw a force that is straight down called the weight. Now this weight can be broken into components. So just look at what's going on here. Imagine that you have this and now it's a horizontal surface. So we turn it so it's a horizontal surface here. We would say that part of that force, that let's say we're pushing at this force here. Well, part of it is doing what? Pushing down on the box, and then part of it's doing what? Pushing this way. So just imagine that we had a box like this, and we're pushing at an angle. Hey, look what we did yesterday. Part of it's doing what? Pushing down, and part of it's doing what? Well, now what if I just rotate it like this? Isn't the same thing happening? Where this is the weight, straight down. Part of it is pushing it into the surface, and part of it is causing it to then slide down the ramp. That's all we've done. And we're going to give these specific names. We're going to call this one, this force that's then causing it to slide down the ramp, F sub D, which is the force down the ramp, or down the incline. This force is pushing into the surface. What is the surface doing back to that? Pushing back on it. And what do we call the force that's going from here and pushing back on the box? That is the normal force. That is F sub n. So the magnitude of this component of the weight is equal to the normal force. I'm going to say that again. The magnitude of this component of the weight is equal to the normal force, which is pushing back on it. This is a right angle. And these two triangles are congruent. They're similar right triangles, where this angle here, anybody know what that angle is? It is 30 degrees. It is the same as this angle right here. These two angles are congruent because they're similar right triangles. We could go through the geometry theorems to do that, but I can put that in an, another video. Okay? Trust me that those two are congruent angles. So we have the weight, we have FD, and we have FN. Let's establish a few things about those. First of all, how are we going to find the weight? Good. Mass times gravitational acceleration. That's pretty straightforward. How do we find FD? Well, what side of my right triangle is that? The opposite, and what is the weight? Hypotenuse. So what trig function do we use with opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. So the sine of my angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Let's do some substitution. Sine of theta equals FD over the weight. So what is FD? Good. The weight times the sine of theta. We're going to use that a lot. Weight sine theta.
Let's look at Fn now. What side is Fn? It's the adjacent side of that angle. And we know the hypotenuse, which is the weight. So therefore, how do these two relate? Adjacent and hypotenuse use the cosine. So this is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Let's do a little substitution. Cosine theta is equal to Fn over the weight. So therefore, Fn equals weight cosine theta. These two equations we're going to use a lot. So let's look at your notes. It says calculate the weight of the block and locate this force on the diagram. So essentially we're doing this part right here. Find the weight. Well, what do we know about the block? It's 50.0 kilograms is its mass. So therefore we can plug it in. Weight is 50.0 kilograms times 9.80 meters per second squared. So our weight equals 490 newtons. Again, if I'm looking at digits, I have three, three, answer as three, carry a couple. Since it asked me what is the weight, I'm going to report it to the appropriate number of significant digits and box it in. So this is letter A on your sheet. And we've already got it labeled on there. <coughs> Questions on that? All right, let's go to B. Calculate the normal force and locate this force on the diagram. We've already located it. It's the force that's going to be pushing up on the box, which is the reaction to the box pushing down on the surface. And we've said it's this right here. So this is part B on our sheet. Let's plug it in. What's the weight? It's right from here. 490.00 newtons times cosine of 30.0 degrees. Uh, make sure you're in degree mode if you have a graphing calculator. I get 424.35 newtons. So when I report that, 424 newtons. C, calculate the force pulling the block down the ramp. Again, that would be this component of the weight. So again, part of the weight pushes it into the ramp, part of the weight pulls it down the ramp. You see how I can put FD down here, or I can actually label FD right up here. That's essentially kind of where it's acting, as it's pulling down the ramp, part of it's going into here, that's where we get our resultant of the weight when we add FD plus that component. How do we solve for FD? It's right here. Weight is still 490.00 <coughs> times the sine of 30.0 degrees. How many of you can do this in your head? Sine of 30 is? Yeah, 245, it's a half. <coughs> So there's A, B, and C. Let's read letter D. It says, what is the net force acting on the block, and what is the frictional force acting on the block? What do we know about the block? How is it moving? With a constant velocity. That should spark something in our brain and tell us what? Constant velocity means that our acceleration is? Good zero meters per second squared. And if our acceleration is zero meters per second squared, therefore, the net force is zero newtons. 
and therefore the forces that are down the ramp are equal to the forces that are what? Up the ramp. Everybody see that? I just put arrows like down the ramp and up the ramp. What are the forces down the ramp? FD, what are the forces up the ramp? Well, let's look. Good. So right here I could draw an arrow that's pushing up the ramp that's opposing its motion. And that would be what kind of friction? Kinetic, because it's sliding, so FK. So let's look back at what D says. It says, what's the net force acting on the block? Boom, there's the net force, zero newtons. Then it asks, what is the frictional force acting on the block? Well, if FK equals FD, what is FK? 245 newtons. It's right there. Understand the work, the explanation that I want you to show? I want you to show these steps. All right, letter E. What's it ask now? We want to find the coefficient of kinetic friction. What's our equation to solve for that? FK equals UKFN. So if I'm solving for mu K, it equals FK over FN. Do we know FK? Yep. Do we know FN? Yep. So let's do some substitution here. So we have 245.00 newtons divided by 424.35 newtons. Again, carrying extra digits and underlining it. Getting a good habit of that. So I don't have any round off error. I still have this number in my calculator. So if I want to put that in Wow, that's some dyslexia there. 424.35. There we go. Oh, okay. There it is. And now we want to divide that um, into 245. So I'm going to just hit my 1 over x key. So that makes it an inverse. And then multiply that by 245. And there's my value. 0.577. What's the unit on that? Yeah, it's unitless. Newton divided by Newton is a nothing. It's a coefficient, so it's just a number. Now I want to show you something that's fairly neat. You ready for something that's neat? Here's the neat part. Whenever you have an object that's sitting on an incline, that's sliding at a constant velocity, or that's stationary. So the acceleration is zero and the net force on the box up and down the incline is zero. So therefore the force down the ramp is equal to the frictional force. Watch what we can do. See this equation right here? What is FK? FD. What is FD? FD is equal to the weight sine theta. Let's plug it in. What is FN? Weight cosine theta. What happens to the weights? What is sine theta divided by cosine theta? What is the tangent of 30.0 degrees? If you don't believe me, here we go. Tangent, 30. Oh, I'm glad that worked out because that would have looked really foolish. <laughs> Okay? So, does it matter how...